Victory over death. We're all appointed to die. You know, the media and, you know, entertainment, politicians, and, you know, certain aspects of government want to push fear on your life. You know, we're not to fear the things of the world, whether it be a virus, whether it be chaos in the street, whether it be wars or rumors of wars. We're not to fear these things. You know how you overcome fear? By the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. My testimony is I was a drug addict. I overcome drugs by reading the entire word of God. I heard it from the front to the back. That's how I overcome addiction. It really is. I had some help. Like people like Judge Engel and other people helped help me along the road, along the way, so to speak. But, you know, I really never overcome it until, you know, I got saved and I chose the Word of God. And the Word of God helps you overcome fear. Just like it helped me overcome addiction, it will help you overcome fear. And, you know, I deal with, I've dealt with anxiety. It's not fun. And, you know, when you, people are selling you fear, it's going to cause anxiety. Never in my life have I seen so many young people having anxiety attacks, panic attacks, stressed out, afraid to go out into the world. Never in my life. You know why? Because the things I just told you about. Media, entertainment, and 24-hour news cycle selling fear. You know, these people get paid billions of dollars to make you afraid. They get paid billions of dollars. Now, I'm not taking this virus lightly. It, 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 it should be taken seriously. But the, it shouldn't be taken to the point where you're afraid to live. Because look here, you're going to die, whether it be by a virus, old age, a car accident, some insane gunman that just has no form of you no know, morals whatsoever about him. He just wants to go out and kill people for no reason at all because he's demon-possessed. You're going to die. That's that's not scary. I mean, it's, it's not supposed to be scary, you know. If you're a, a Bible-believing Christian, then you know there's a better place after death. And some of you are holding on to this world more than you are Jesus Christ. You know, it's like you're afraid to live in peace and harmony forever. And I'm not... Now, I'm not trying to say be suicidal or want to die or anything, but, you know, I would love for that twinkling of the eye to happen right now. That way I could see my Lord and Savior. And I wouldn't have to deal with this world no more because the world is full of disease, viruses, it's full of anger, hatred, envy, vanity. It's full of all these horrible things that make people just miserable people. It really does. It makes people miserable. And, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a Christian, if you're a true Bible-believing Christian, then the things of this world, you should be able to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Just like me overcoming addiction. You know, I had some pretty good help, like Judge Engel and other folks helped me out. But it wasn't until I read through the Word of God completely, I read it from the front to the back, that I completely overcome addiction. I had no desire to do drugs like that no more. None whatsoever. I have no desire for that lifestyle. That lifestyle is a road to a bottomless pit that's full of, you know, misery. And it's full of people that want you to be down there with them. Because misery loves company. That's why the devil is the king of misery. He really is. He is a king of misery because he wants company. He wants to bring down as many people as possible. That's what he done to a lot of the angels that were in heaven. If you don't think, you know, God won't send you to hell, if you're living in sin, look what he done to his one of his top angels that tried to overthrow him. And the devil is a wily character. He convinced a ton of angels to go against the people, 
Go get the man who created him. I mean, stop dwelling in fear and start dwelling in the Word of God. Start dwelling in the Spirit of God. Walk in the Spirit of God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all His ways, He will direct your paths. That is the Word of God. Anyways, I want to read to you in 1 Corinthians, because that's what I've been studying in. Uh, chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. And what it's talking about in that twinkling of an eye is the rapture. Whether you want to believe that or not, that's going to happen. Do you think the virus changed the world? <laughs> wait, wait till the rapture happens. Wait till that happens. You're going to see a lot of wickedness happen. It says, this is like, you know, a psalm to me. It's, it's, it's like a, it's poetry. I love this part, of the, this part of this passage in this Bible. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is the, thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your, your labor is not in vain. I mean, the world wants to, wants to shut you up, stop you from speaking, you know, God's truth, stop you from speaking biblically truth. That's why, you know, you, you see folks making fun of other folks, calling them Bible thumpers, holy rollers, and all this stuff. Those people are not Christians. Those people are not Christians. They have no form of, they have a form of godliness, but they deny his power. For such turn away. Those people are lukewarm. They're going to get spewed out into the lake of fire, just like, you know, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast, and all those who worship the beast. That's a fact of life. That is a fact of life. Those who preach fear are not of God. The only fear you should be preaching is the fear of God. And that, that, that's a different type of fear. That's like a fear of a parent. Because when you fear your parent, you're more inclined to obey your parent. But if you don't fear your parent, you're not, uh, not inclined to obey him. You will be disobedient. Just like a lot of folks are disobedient to God. Because they don't fear God. Because, you know, the world has taught them not to fear God. Because of pride. Because, you know, peer pressure. Trying to look cool before your fellow man. Look here, your fellow man does not hold the keys to heaven. That's another fact of life. Your fellow man will not be able to get you into heaven unless you repent and be born again and admit Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose the third day for the remission of your sins. You are not going to heaven. That's the one path, the only path. That is the road to heaven. You cannot go to heaven. There's no other. I don't care what Oprah says. I don't care what she says. She's retarded. Anybody that would claim to be a Christian and then sit there and deny the very word of God that is supposed to dwell in them is not a Christian. 
There's no other ways to God. That's why Jesus Christ says there's no other way but by Him. But by Him. Unless you repent and do these things, I just mentioned, you're not going to heaven. You're going to hell, which gets cast into the lake of fire. And that is serious. That is torment. That is torture. That's forever and ever. You know, you're, you're going to live forever. I don't care... Whether you are a Christian or not, you're going to live forever. Your destination is your problem. You can either choose heaven or you can choose hell. You know, it ain't God that's punishing you. It's you. You've judged yourself. Even though God judges you, God's going to judge you whether you go to heaven or hell. But you, ju you, you ultimately judge yourself because you chose the life to live. You have to own up to your mistakes and repent for them unless you want to go to hell. You can't look like the world, talk like the world, and walk like the world. You have to walk with Christ. You have to hold Christ's hand. You cannot hold both of them. You can either love one or hate the other or hate one or love the, love the other. That's, that's as simple as that. You can't love, you know, God and mammon at the same time. You really can't. That's the word of God also. Amen. You got to stop stressing. And you got to stop selling all this fear to people. And that goes to, you know, uh, you folks that think it's cool, you know, to uh, make people afraid by pushing your fear on them. Because, you know, that's that misery. Even Christians are doing it. It's horrible. It's really horrible. Well, so-called Christians, you got these people with a form of godliness. I don't care whether they're in, a, they're in a Pentecostal church or a holiness church or a Baptist church or a Catholic, whatever whatever denomination they're in. I, I, honestly, I don't give a crap about denominations. There's only one denomination. It's Christ Jesus. That's, that's the way I look at that. But anyways, you, you see them in all these churches and you, and, and you, you see these people just trying to make people live in fear they try to force their fear and take away your liberties so they can feel safe <laughs> that's 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 their whole goal in life because you know they're miserable they're terrified because you know they really don't believe the word of god if they did they wouldn't be terrified right now they wouldn't be afraid to walk out their house you should not be afraid to walk out your house you really shouldn't and that's not being, you know, uh, reckless like some people claim. Look here. You're either going to catch this virus, you're going to catch a bullet, you're going to catch something that's going to take you out of this life. That's a fact of life. You're not going to escape death. You could die of natural causes. You could die of something that the doctor don't even know what, you're gonna, what it is. That's the truth. Doctors sometimes don't even know what kill people. They die in their sleep and they have no idea. I got a nerve problem. They had no idea what it is. <laughs> they said they just don't know. I mean, if, if that tells you anything. I mean, doctors are not the I. That's Jesus Christ. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the I. That's why God is omnipresent. The devil is not like that. The devil can only send out his legion of demons, which he has a lot of, and he is good at doing what he does. And he does know the word of God just as well as we do. Probably better. Considering, you know, he he, he was up there with God. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that when you, when you see somebody trying to be deceptive, deceptive and trying a new form of, you know, trying a new thing. You know, God says do a new thing, but he doesn't say do a new thing that is against him. He says do a new thing for him. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, then you know it's not of God. It's of the other person. Be not deceived. And God shall not be mocked. These people will be judged. They will be judged. You just sell fear because you want to implement, you know, tyranny or you want to feel safe. You, you should be ashamed of yourself. I, I, all I ask is you repent and look into the word of God and, you know, love thy neighbor. God bless.